Welcome to our next video. Hello, everybody. Wherever you are, if you're listening or if you're watching, <laughs> uh, take a minute to really gather your energy and be present and be wherever you are and kind of let everything that was in your mind and your brain just pour out. We have our little Buddha meditating here. Um, and so I want to offer you to be in that same space, this space of clarity and clearness and receiving. So whether that means just like, a, like getting stuff out or whatever needs to happen to ground down. Awesome. So a lot of this course already has been about reprogramming our mind and redesigning our relationship with how we perceive reality. When we have less tension in our body, uh, which is tension from our mind, um, and we receive the world in a more clean and accepting way, our body holds less tension, there's less disease. So a lot of disease, at least according to Ayurveda, it comes from the mind. It starts in the mind and it moves through the body. Um, there's a really interesting idea, like in the perspective of Ayurveda, it's a, a medical science from India, is that disease starts from the repetitive not following your intuition. Think about that. If you are continually not following what your body is telling you is right, then eventually something will develop. And it starts gradually and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's why we have such a focus, even in this holistic program of the mind. The mind is where things start. In Balinese culture, they say there's the Nizkala, the world that we don't see. This world of darkness is much larger than the world that we do see. And it's interesting because in many paradigms, there's light and dark, but there's a void that holds them both. So in this world that we don't see, the, the world that we do see is contained within that world. And we can also think about it like when our thoughts come, when our thoughts start to pop up, where do they pop up from? And if you start to notice when our thoughts come, on either side of our thought, there's silence. And we'll get to this in one of the other lessons when we talk about meditation. But essentially, everything that we are experiencing is happening within a void, within a nothingness. Um, and we can start to see that on an experiential level when we start looking at different things and we can explore that. But the idea is, is when we recognize that everything that is seen is coming from a space much more subtle, then we can start interacting with that subtle space and receiving the seen world in a different way, which allows us to digest the food and the input that we're receiving and let it go and let it go through us. Only when we hold on is when blockages start happening, is when lack of circulation and a buildup of unwanted uh, matter, I suppose would be the idea. So today is about letting go of things, is about clearing the mind and working with our body to bring us to a state of acceptance and love and surrender and a letting go. There's no need to hold on to anything in this life. Everything will go away eventually uh, when it's time. And so when we start to let go of trying to hold on, then we actually get to enjoy everything for the time that it's here. And then when it passes, then we get to enjoy the next thing and we get to grieve this beautiful time. So that's what we're gonna explore today. So there's a concept called, um, what do you call it? Um, affirmations. <laughs> Most of us are familiar with affirmations. Uh, I am strong, I am powerful, I am love, I am loving. It's anything that we are affirming or asserting to bring us into that vibration. And it's a beautiful idea. Affirmations are wonderful when we are in a place of receptibility, which is what we spoke about in one of the other um other classes that when we're in a place, whether it's a meditation or in different states of consciousness, where our mind is much quieter and our subconscious is more fertile, then we're able to receive affirmations and those affirmations get planted. I'm strong, I'm lovable, I'm enough, I'm loving or whatever. 
However, <laughs> um, the unfortunate part about uh, affirmations is that when our mind, when our conscious mind is aware and it's really not feeling with, feeling like or identifying with that affirmation, it's almost like a little scumbag that's like, bullshit. So I'm like, I am strong, but I'm not feeling strong. Like I just had my heart broken and like my car got smashed and I'm like, I am strong. And my mind's like, that's bullshit. Like you're not strong. And then we start this like conversation with the mind or this little banter with the mind where the mind's like, no, actually you're pathetic and you're this and you're that. And you're like, no, I'm strong. And then you don't feel strong and we're losing the benefit of the affirmation. So in times like this, we have another tool and that's what we're going to explore today the tool of something called an empowering question. So this comes from NLP, from Neuro Linguistic Programming, and it's really reprogramming our brain. And when I say reprogramming, it's almost like our programming is our subconscious mind. It's what we what runs in the background, what we don't see. So when you look at a computer, you can't see the programming. It's like all these things running in the background to give you the nice picture that shows up on the screen. And our programming is very similar. We in order to really look at our programming, we have to guide ourselves into that space. We have to be really aware of these very subtle things because our programming is the motivation of our behavior. It's our values, it's our beliefs. These are the programs that run in the background, similar to a phone as well. Um, so empowering questions go straight to the programming and bypass the mind, bypass our filter. And they're really powerful concepts so for example an affirmation would say i am strong and if you're in the space to receive that then you're like yeah i am strong like ah but an empowering question asks a question not to the mind to the body and we do this by saying how would it feel that's how we start them how would it feel because we're asking the body, we're asking the body to show us, to mimic an experience for us. Now, the idea behind an empowering question is I imagine it almost like if you have a water bottle full of water, it's like dropping a drop of um, food coloring into the, into the bottle. And you can just see the food coloring as it permeates everything it almost flows into the entire bottle and creates this beautiful blue or red color throughout the entire water bottle so that's the idea of what we're doing imagine as you ask this question that you're <laughs> that you're dropping this question in and you're not needing to answer you're not needing to respond that's what your mind wants to do it wants to respond it wants to give an answer but instead of this we're actually just dropping the question in and letting the body respond instead of the mind respond. So what that looks like is your body will respond in a way by creating what you're asking. It's really fascinating. So we're gonna try this. We're gonna do it nine times. Um, if you wanna close your eyes, I'm gonna ask a question and just observe, and you can repeat the question back, you can repeat the question in your head, or you can just listen, whatever's feeling right for you. Um, if you repeat the question, it'll be even more powerful. It'll have a stronger effect on your body. But either way, you'll, I'm sure you'll get the effect. And then you just observe what happens in your body. It's quite fascinating. And it may not happen the first or second time, but after we get to eight or nine, we'll start to feel more of an impact. And that's why nine times is really valuable because it solidifies and anchors in what we're wanting to experience. So in general, we can do this with anything. We can say, how would it feel to be? Or how would it feel to? And let's say... I'm wanting to feel more relaxed. So let's explore that one. So we can close the eyes down and roll the shoulders back and just take a moment to rest in your own space, in your own body, in your own mind. And we ask the question and just let it permeate the cells of your body. How would it feel to be even more relaxed? How would it feel to be even more relaxed? How would it feel to be even more relaxed?
How would it feel to be even more relaxed? How would it feel to be even more relaxed? And as you sit in this deep relaxation, we're going to ask a question on the other side and just watch what happens in the body. How would it feel to be even more focused and sharp? How would it feel to be even more focused, even sharper? How would it feel for all the cells in my body to be sharp and listening and focused, aware, connected to the present moment? And take a deep inhale. And we can release the practice. <sighs> what happened? Take a moment to really start to recognize if you even want to say out loud, like, wow, did you feel a shift in your body during the two different questions? What happened in your mind? What happened in your body? Can you feel a change of energy? Can you feel a deepening when we did it five or six times? Or a strengthening or anchoring of that experience? I'm like listening. I'm like really trying to... These are empowering questions, and we can do it with anything. For example, if we're finding that we're having a lot of stress around eating, like, oh, I am having a really hard time respecting my body or listening to my body when it's full and I'm overeating or I'm thinking about food all the time. If that's a challenge in your life or an issue that's coming up, then you can make an empowering question around that. You can say, how would it feel to listen to my body and know when I'm full? Or how would it feel to eat in a way that honors my body? And if you do this every day, nine times in the morning, nine times in the evening, you'll start to reprogram the very subtle foundation that everything else comes from. If we uproot the tree, then we get new fruit. But a lot of us are trying to cut the branches of the fruit Or clean up the mess of fruit that we don't want anymore and try to give it away. And that's an endless cycle. It's not that it's right or wrong, but if we really take the roots out and put new roots in, wow, it's going to be so much easier on a foundational level. And that's what this practice leads us to, is really, really restructuring our belief patterns around anything. So we can guide our body and mind to creating that experience for us. Now what's interesting is that sometimes we'll see that we have these desires. Like I want to be I want to be nicer. I don't want to get so angry all the time. When someone cuts me off in traffic, I don't want to get angry. And when I'm just hanging out in my house, that's like, yeah, that's what I want. But then someone cuts me off and I freak out again. So what happens is when our body's under stress, we're in fight or flight mode. It's like, it's a different world. We're like a different person. But what we can do is like in that moment, there's not a whole lot I can do. I'm in reaction mode instead of responding mode. So what empowering questions do is when we are at times in our life where we're actually really relaxed and more receptive, that's the time to start uprooting the beliefs, plant new beliefs so that when we do get stressed, new beliefs will come through. That in that period of stress, we'll resp- even our reaction will be different. So these are the most important when we're really chill and relaxed. Or when we're not in a stressful space. When we're not in the moment. It also works in the moment. It's great in the moment. But sometimes it's hard to remember to do it when you're like, when you're eating or you're really hungry or you're really angry or whatever. 
really frustrated when you're in the emotion. It makes it more challenging. They do pull you into other emotions. And what I would refrain from doing is using this practice to change your emotions. Rather, ch rather it's so beneficial to change your relationship, whatever emotion or experience you're having. So how would it feel to receive this anger with more love? Or how would it feel to really accept my anger? Or how would it feel to embrace my pain and then let it go? So I'm going to attach another talk that goes with this that is connected to this beautiful process called the heart compass. And I'll attach a document as well. And the heart compass is basically a process of five questions it's a psychological process that we can go through for any of us who have had any traumatic experience, which is all of us. <laughs> all of us have trauma in our lives. Trauma can be, it can range from anything. It's not necessarily important, the content, but it's how the content is stored. If a little kid uh, has his candy taken away, that could be just as traumatic as getting in a car accident as an adult or even as a kid. Trauma is trauma and it's stored in the body. And so Trauma is almost the way we receive, our body receives an event. And so this beautiful heart compass is a way to restructure the way we receive our trauma and to release the trauma. So I'll add a talk uh, from my podcast that goes along with that. And it uses multiple empowering questions that guide us in a way that allows us to receive and let go so that we're not holding on anymore when we hold on tension when we hold on to tension, we we develop disease. That's just, it's like a kink in the hose and the water can't get through it. Eventually it starts spraying out all the sides and not so good. So how would it feel to whatever? How would it feel to be happy? How would it feel to know that everything's okay? Your task for this week is maybe to create two empowering questions that will serve you looking at challenges in your life and seeing if you can restructure the way you see those challenges. How would it feel to receive this with more love? How would it feel to not need to change the people around me? How would it feel to accept and love my children? How would it feel to accept and love my partner for who they are? Nine times in the morning, in the evening, when you have time. If you can't do it nine times, <laughs> you need to do it 10 times. <laughs> There's a beautiful concept. If you don't have 10 minutes to meditate, then you need to be meditating for an hour. These are important things. And if, if these aren't the most important things, whether it's this practice or any practice, then our life is going maybe the wrong direction. <laughs> so thank you for listening. We'll do two ah, breaths, and then we'll do three ohms, and then we'll move on. Thank you for listening. Let's take a deep inhale. And create some sound. Ah, whatever wants to come out. Deep inhale. One more. Ah. And we'll do three ohms together. Inhale. Oh. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for honoring yourself and your body and your mind. These are the most precious pieces of us we have. So thank you for taking care of them, for maintaining them. Hari Om Tat Sat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See you guys next week.